Okay, today we're going to be in the book of Exodus. We're going to continue our, um, our study in the book of Exodus, um, which is uh, a book of exiting out of uh, bondage. Exiting out of bondage. Uh, before I begin with this study, one of the things that we have to understand that Exodus is the second book of the Bible. The first book is Genesis, and the second book is Exodus. I believe the reason why the second book is called Exodus is because it then shows us a clear picture and the methodology of God concerning his people. In the book of Genesis, we understand that he creates his people. We understand that the people that he created fail. They had some problems, they had some issues, they had some dilemmas. Uh, because of the dilemma, because of the problem that then happened of his creation that he created, he then um, came up with a plan to redeem and to restore his people. And it's just a blessing to know that in spite of whatever we have faced, in spite of the mistakes that we have made, in spite of the choices that we have made, it is good to know that God always has a plan of escape. Amen? Amen. That's a blessing. This is the hope. And this is why the Bible calls Jesus the blessed hope. The reason why he is the hope of the world and he is the true hope of the world is because anytime you are connected to Christ, trust me, he is going to draw you out. Amen? It uh, doesn't matter the circumstance or situation. At the end of the day, there will be an exit strategy. This is why I believe that the second book of the Bible is called Exodus. Because the reality is, even if you are marked of God, the hand of God being over your life, God being with you, God calling you for his service, God calling you for his plan, even in the midst of you having a call of God over your life, sometimes we get caught up in things. Amen? The second book is called Exodus. Um, and just to give a, a, a backdrop of what is actually taking place in this book, the children of Israel, or um, let's just say God's covenanted people, they are, um, uh, God's covenanted people have um, come from the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham being the father, Isaac uh, being the, um, Isaac being the son, and then Jacob being the grandson, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, out of Abraham's descendants, God creates the chosen people or the children of Israel. Just to give everybody a backdrop of exactly what happens. What then happens, uh, the children of Jacob, and I want everybody to follow me, the sons of the sons of Jacob, Jacob has how many sons? How many sons does Jacob have? Jacob has 12 sons. Those 12 sons, uh, out of those 12 sons, there was one son by the name of Joseph. Joseph um, was, was a son that got caught up in all types of stuff. He went to jail. He was uh, rejected. He was uh, falsely accused. And he went through all types of things. But he was the chosen son. He was the chosen son that would then be blessed of God. He would then be rejected by his family. But God preserved his life and blessed him at the end. Make a long story short, Jacob, uh, Joseph, at the end of his trials and at the end of everything that he endured, God places him to be right up under Pharaoh. In other words, he places him right up under uh, the president, let's say, let's say that, because at that time, Egypt was uh, the dominating nation of the world. Uh, there was no greater nation than the nation of Egypt at that time. God blesses Joseph, places him under Pharaoh, so he is like the vice president of Egypt. Uh, now Joseph is the vice president of Egypt. Then when there was a famine that hit, Joseph then calls for his family to come to Egypt because everybody else was dying. He was marked to preserve people. This is what I really want to say. And please understand this very carefully. The hand of God, the reason why you are marked is because God has called you to preserve life. Somebody say life. The reason why Joseph had to come to Egypt was so that when the famine hit, and the famine is when there was a drought of food and there was, there was no substance and people were dying because of the famine, Joseph is in position so that he can preserve the people from the famine. 
And this is what it is that God has called us for. Because there are tailored people connected to our life. Whether it's a family member, whether it's a loved one, whether it's a friend, regardless of who it is, there is somebody that God has designated in our life to preserve. Amen? All right. So at this point, uh, Joseph, is in, he, Joseph is in Egypt. He calls for his family to come to Egypt. His family comes to Egypt as a family of 70. Now, I want everybody under to understand this. He calls for his family to come to Egypt. They come as a family of 70, of 70, okay? And they come as friends of the Pharaoh. They were friends. They were invited as friends. But you know how people do sometimes, amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They come as a family of 70, invited by the Pharaoh, but all of a sudden, the same Pharaoh that invited the people then switched. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. We're in the book of Exodus, everybody. He switched. So I want everybody to turn to the book of Exodus, um, and then we will um, look at chapter 1. And we'll just skim through chapter 1, and then we'll go to different passages in, in Exodus. Exodus chapter 1. And I want everybody to see um, uh, Exodus chapter 1, verse 8. Oh, no, no, no. Praise the Lord. Amen. Exodus chapter 1, verse 8. And it says, now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, behold, the people of the children, the, 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 because, and he said unto his people, behold, the people of the children of Israel are more mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when they fall out in out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. And so get them up out of the land. Verse 11. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pitom and Ramses. So let's just deal with this. They come into Egypt as a family. They come in as friends of Pharaoh. But now what happens is the Pharaoh that brought them in dies. There arises a new Pharaoh who knew not Joseph. And so now he changes on them. He changes on them. Uh, Exodus. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so he changes. Uh, ex yeah, we're Exodus chapter one. We're just uh, just doing a, uh, a preview of everything that we uh, talked about. So there is a new there is a new Pharaoh. He changes um, uh, 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 his his relationship with the children of Israel. They are now afflicted. They are now afflicted. They are now afflicted. They are now afflicted because there's a different there's a different. Um, there's a different Pharaoh that comes into power. This is important to understand because at this point, uh, the children of Israel at one stage, they are blessed. I want everybody to follow me. At one stage, they are blessed, but, but within a snap of, of a finger, they, are, they went from one place of being blessed, one place of being favored, to being afflicted. And I want you to follow me. One place of being favored, one place of being blessed, and then all of a sudden, they are being afflicted. This is the truth of how it is sometimes in our walk with the Lord. Now, we will have to understand that this seems kind of, this doesn't seem uh, 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 to really, this, this doesn't seem to go together because if I am called of God and if the hand of God is over me, how is it that I can be at one stage of my, my life of being blessed to being in a completely opposite place in my life of being afflicted? One of the things I want to say as being a born again believer, when you are born again, when the spirit of God is within you, if you are born again, it does not exempt you from issues and from problems. The thing, but the determining factor is this. We did go through the same types of things that those that are not in covenant with God also go into as well. We go through the same types of issues. We go through the same types of dilemmas. As the world, we have the same types of problems. But the difference is when we go through something, not only will we come out, but hear me, watch this, we see God in it. I want you to understand. When we come out of something, we have revelation of who Christ is. 
You have to understand how precious that is. Because the Bible says that your faith is precious. Oh, it's precious. The ability to see God operating 